welcome to another Dr. Russ air rifle adventure. I'm shooting today the uh, the Hudson Bull Boss with a Woodstock, one of my favorites actually. I've got uh, a small leveler here that I, I glued on myself. It's important that the gun is level when I'm shooting. This particular uh, center point scope, which I bought refurbished, is a, a four by 16. And it has uh, a 30 millimeter tube. It has the uh, battery up here. Also up here is uh, an objective uh, adjustment on the forward lens. And as you can see, I've set this for 100 yards because that's what I'm shooting today. Uh, it's a, a great gun. It's got a lever action and uh, holds about 10 or 12, uh, 25 calibers. At the very end, I've got a Ronin suppressor and it's gonna make sure that this gun makes a thunk by the time the neighbors hear it rather than a sharp crack like a firecracker. Well, let's see. I purposely showed you one of my air rifles that had the most money put into it. Why would I do that? Well, I get very, very disturbed when I hear about any of our viewers getting deeper into debt. Oh my goodness, I've heard some crazy stories over the years. And I want you to know that a couple of my videos have addressed debt. Uh, for example, there's one in which I showed you my sources for buying guns since I don't have any sponsors. And uh, I go and get refurbished guns through the internet. I uh, also talked about how you might expand your backyard shooting into some country shooting by getting into business with critter control. Uh, and I gave you some ideas there. And I, I got a lot of the creative juices uh, going on that. But I thought today I'd just get a little bit more into how you can get into this hobby, maybe own some expensive guns and accessories without getting into great debt. I was helping a, a couple the other day, and that's probably what precipitated today's video. Uh, he made 60,000 a year. His wife made 60,000 a year, and they had credit card debt that was totaling $60,000. They wondered, they knew they were in trouble, they just didn't know where and why they were in some trouble. I pointed out that at just roughly 20% credit card debt, that their debt service or the interest that was owed on that credit card was 12,000 a year, 20% of 60,000. That's a thousand a month interest. And so when they came up with a thousand dollar a month payment, they were just paying interest. These ideas of I'll buy something, I get 30% off. By the time they pay all the credit on it over the next three or four years, if they even get out of that debt, they've long since overpaid the 30% they thought they were saving. So uh, they were violating a rule that many, many Americans violate. And that is your income has to be greater than your outgo. Now, the problem is people don't know what their income is. You see, when I sat down with them and talked to them about it, it's just friends, uh, they had to realize that they were paying 24% federal income tax. Here in Michigan, 4% state income tax. They uh, lived and worked in one of our cities, so there was 2% city tax. And then FICA, that Federal Insurance Corporation of America was another 15%. Fortunately, in this case, their employer paid half and they paid half, but that was still another seven and a half percent. And the point was they weren't making 60,000. They were making a little over 30,000 a piece, but yet they were going out and spending like they had 60,000. 60,000, I can afford a nice air gun like this, a nice scope, etc. But once they learn that they've only making 30, that's a different story. And so 
I've had two videos so far that talked about how you can buy some refurbished equipment cheaper. And uh, I got into a video uh, not long ago about how you might even become an entrepreneur. I was focused that day, not on teaching you how to manage money better, but more on uh, opening up a critter control business and uh, how you could get into some farmers and ranches, etc. cetera, uh, some neighbors with large rural uh, plots and uh, be able to shoot there successfully for free and to be invited to do so. And that might be a little better than the small backyard you were shooting in. So today I decided I'd just take that a step further. In an earlier video titled, Don't Buy the Wrong Air Gun, I was bringing to the attention that I see a lot of people, I've even been guilty of it myself, of buying the wrong air gun. I always start off with 17 caliber and pretty soon we're into 22 and 25 and 33 and then even the, the big bore air guns. Never to shoot the 17 caliber again. Uh, and so I talked in that one, don't buy the wrong air gun. I talked about a, a plan so that you could determine what your true needs were based upon what you had available so that you'd buy the right air gun. Um, ultimately, uh, that decision was based upon what your backyard looked like and did you have access to some hunting or critter control or something beyond the backyard. I suggested in that particular video that you print up some, some flyers and uh, put a hundred or five hundred of these out in some mailboxes and uh, I suggested at least initially, to offer your services free. Pretty hard to turn that one down. Another key word is safe. Safe. I think farmers and ranchers are particularly concerned about their cows and their horses and their chickens, and they don't wanna see them running all over the place. They wanna see that you come in and that you've methodically taken care of their critters safely, quietly, that's why I've got that uh, moderator, that suppressor on the end of that moderated barrel there. Uh, so that I can shoot and animals and people don't even know I'm shooting. With this flyer, <laughs> you might have a photo of yourself <laughs> and uh, a listing here of all that you do, along with your address and phone number. And if you stuck enough of those in the mailbox, you just might be in the critter control business. Now, what I didn't realize is that scares a lot of people. I want you to be in the critter control business. I want you to be an entrepreneur. I want you to be in business. I took that for granted because I've started probably 20, 25 businesses in my lifetime probably made a pretty good fortune just selling them. Forget about what I earned in the middle. And what I'm trying to teach you today is a little bit of something about just starting a business so that your income is greater. Know about the fact that the outgo has to be smaller. And uh, if it's the right business, you might just see your hobby of air gunning expand greatly. What you own and where you shoot. Wouldn't that be nice? First question about getting into a business that's going to support your air gunning would be what type of business will you be in? And uh, the one that uh, is a great starting place is a DBA. It stands for doing business as. And what it really means is that I don't, I didn't really start a, a, a complete separate business with its own federal ID number and all of that. This is a business that's going to use my social security number. This is a business that's gonna become my second name. Now, you know, your mother gave you a name, your mother and father when you were born, and now you're picking a second name. For example, um, a Critter Control USA. 
So now I have two names, the one my mother gave me and a second one because I went to the county courthouse, paid about $15 and I now do business as Critter Control. I can take this piece of paper and go to the bank and I can get uh, a checking account with that name on it and now I have that business with just one tax return to do. My own tax return and an extra added piece of paper in it called Schedule C. Now I'm not gonna explain the other levels of business other than to say this, 99% of you wanna start right here. You're really considered a sole proprietorship, a one person company, if you will, at that time. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't pay some wives and kids for some jobs too. But from there, we go to a subchapter S and a C Corp. And what these require is something altogether different. Now keep in mind, each of these has different tax advantages. I'll let you sit down with your tax advisor to learn and make sure that you're getting the right tax advantages for you. But down here, these two levels, is what you'll graduate to one day if you really do become a great critter control company in the United States. And that is you'll have its own federal ID number. It'll require, in effect, a second tax return to determine, you know, A, were you profitable? And B, was the company profitable? But up here, you and the company are one. Once you get that DBA paper from the county clerk, you'll go to the bank and open up your checking account. My earlier video was really talking about how you just go into the critter control business for free get your customers, get the people out there uh, 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 happy with letting you hunt on their properties, shoot on their properties, have some place to shoot other than just your backyard. But today we're going to expand on that a little better and get some money into that new checking account you just opened at the bank. So once the customers pay you money and they'll make checks out or pay money and you'll deposit it in an account, in this example, Critter Control USA. Now the question is, how do I get it out of that account and into Dr. Russ's account where I can buy an air gun or uh, an accessory for an air gun? How do I get the money? Well, a lot of people focus right here on this salary. This is the way the checks can come out. Write it to salary. But this is actually the worst place that I want. Because with a salary, I owe federal tax on it, I owe state tax, I owe city tax, and I owe FICA. Why, this gauntlet of taxes here turns out to be 41%. And for some of you who say, well, I've got 10 kids or whatever, I give a lot of money to the church or bank or whatever, you need to know that your deductions are only looping around the federal tax. All you, those deductions are doing, property taxes, you name it, are escaping the 20%. We're still owing state, city, and FICA tax. And by the way, you pay both halves of the FICA here because you're both the boss and the employee. This is not a great way to earn money to go into your account. Let's look at two much better ways. Over in the memo, you'll write down in the memo the check that this is salary or its expenses or its benefits. But look at the gauntlet of taxes on these two categories, expenses and benefits. And by the way, there's, there's not many. Uh, of course, you can, you can write checks out over here to uh, you know, supplies and things like that that you need for your business. And we don't pay any taxes on that. But let's just look at expenses. Oh, well, I need an air gun. I need a scope. Um, I need pellets. I need to build a, a backstop in the barn so that uh, that's right where I put all the bait and my pellets are going there and not destroying the barn. Uh, I may need a vehicle to get there. I may need gas in that vehicle to get there. At any rate, when I buy these things, there is no tax. Some of you are buying your air guns and whatever right now with after-tax money. But with the critter control, no, pre-tax. And then over here in benefits, we, we might need a, some health insurance. 
We may need uh, some life insurance. Uh, we may need a some sort of a pension. Uh, it can turn out to be an IRA or what I call a pregnant IRA. That's called a SEP. Uh, there's just all kinds, 401ks, there's all kinds of things that I can put over here in terms of benefits within my company. And I will pay no taxes on them. Too many times the entrepreneur wants to look at this category over here and doesn't really look at these. Now the IRS has a, uh, a definition of what expenses can be. They have to be necessary and ordinary for that business. So in other words, a yacht salesman can have a yacht and a critter control person can have an air gun. So we have to buy just the things that are necessary and ordinary for that vocation. Previous videos on buying restored air guns, scopes, etc. My previous videos on going into business for yourself and, and now the financial parts of going into business. And if you're never going to go into business, maybe you learned something today about income has to exceed outgo. If it doesn't, that interest rate on loans will never really let you have the 30% discount you thought you were getting when you bought it to begin with. Plan wisely. Now, I hope, I hope you'll remember to give us a thumbs up. I hope you'll remember to uh, leave us a comment. I, I respond to your comments. Um, I don't want to uh, leave out an important part, but if you actually go into business and start collecting money from people, maybe you never get there, but if you did, you want to make sure you're properly licensed in that, care, in that area. Each state, each county seems to have its own rules. Some have no rules, but some do. You want to make sure you know them. Just like we have to know the rules on air guns, you need to know the rules of going into the critter control business in your area. But I hope that you'll leave me your comments. Give us a thumbs up. You might want to subscribe. Well, the, the last time I looked, 35 people a day are subscribing from all over the world. I've got over 4,200 subscribers right now. That, that amazes me. Uh, nonetheless, I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, remember this, we're all in this together so that we can be air gun sharp.